Wool sweaters with holes in them used to be throwouts, but not anymore because I have a fantastic solution for you and it's cheap and easy and really fun. Coming right up. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dill girl. If you like vintage sweaters or you just have a favorite old wool thing and eventually it gets a hole in it, like this sweater here, for example, you're going to be so disappointed because, you know, once the sh fibers are severed by some rotten moth, there's not much you can do to repair it. I had a friend who said, you can actually take a hair from your head and thread it through a needle and repair the hole and it hardly shows at all. Just you mend it with a hair. Go ahead, try it and thread a needle with a hair. It's really hard. I've tried it. Okay, I have a solution. It's the coolest thing ever. This is the ancient art of felting. And you basically take long fibers of raw wool and you use a felting needle. I've been doing all these swirly things and that's really fun. And you know where I got my supplies? From Germany. This really cool girl has a company called Wool Filler and you specify five colors that uh, most of your clothes are in sort of a certain range of colors. So I've got these five colors and you get this sponge also that has two felting needles that come with it. And this is a felting needle, it looks like this. It has little barbs on it to push the wool through the fibers. So these raw wool fibers are called rovings and you can get them uh, at a really good wool supply shop. These are made in Nova Scotia, they're hand uh, dyed, they're kind of cool. But anyway, you can get any color basically is what I'm trying to tell you. And so how do you do it? Well, see like this thing of my mom's, it's an old mohair shawl. It's got a big hole in it right here. So this is all you do. You'll really like this. It's really, really fun and quite addicting, I must say. So I put the sponge underneath it like this. Then you take a few fibers of the matching wool, like maybe that many. You don't want it to be a big lump and you just plop it on like that and then you just start jabbing with the, the felt, felting needle because it's barbed and it will carry the wool fibers through to the other side and then you flip it over and do the same thing on the other side like this. What the fibers are doing is just basically tying themselves in knots all around the hole and kind of weaving themselves together into a little just a little jumble that never ever comes unraveled. So it's really cool. See how fast and fun this is? And then you probably have to do it one more time just to get the fibers to settle down. Again, if you use a really huge clump of fibers, you end up with like more like this, like a little mole on top of the fabric and that doesn't look so good. Is that not the coolest thing ever? You can also do like a funky European look where you use a contrasting color instead of a matching color. Sometimes you'll have trouble matching a color and if you don't want to do a contrasting color, go and get yourself a sweater stone. It's made to take the pills off of sweaters. It's basically a piece of lava. Um, it costs about 12 bucks. And then all you do is you take your garment and you, you comb it a few times like this and the fibers start to build up. Woo! <laughs> on the lava and you just take those and use those as the matching color of your garment. Um, you can also do socks by just taking a, a, like a Nerf ball and sticking it in the toe of the sock like that and then take your fibers. I mean, this is all obvious. I'm just hot talking really. I just don't want to do anything else today except felting. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> See, off I go. This is so much better than darning because darning always leaves a big wacky lump. Your sock is never the same, but these fibers are very subtle and you won't feel a big lump in your toe. Okay, cool. But now you don't have to throw out a single sweater ever again. You know how to fix it. Cool, eh? Do